Hello, I'm Darren Hanser from the National University of Singapore. I'm joined today by Jose Maria Figueres, ex-president of Costa Rica, current president of the Carbon War Room. Jose Maria, tell us uh, why are you here in Singapore? Why has the Carbon War Room come to Singapore? For several reasons. First of all, climate change is a global issue. It's a tremendous challenge, but the greatest opportunity humanity has ever faced in terms of new business models, creative thinking, disruptive technologies, and the creation of jobs and opportunities around the world. That being the case, you cannot really tackle climate change unless you're also present in Asia. After all, this is one of the great growth stories of our times. It will continue to be so into the future. And if we are going to change the trajectory of development from what we have had during the past 200 years towards a low carbon economy going into the future, Asia is a place where we really should kickstart the process. Then we're also in Singapore because uh, this is a unique place, a small country, agile, adaptive, quick moving. That is a tremendous transformational story for the good and for the positive. And in the carbon war room, we would like to be like Singapore. We are small, agile, we would like to be transformative, and we would like to be a force for good in the world. Speaking of the carbon war room, I see on your CV, president of the country, now president of the carbon war room. What are some of the different challenges in leading both entities? Well, leading a country, of course, is a rather unique experience, but in every position of leadership that I have served in, there are certain commonalities which I think are worthwhile mentioning. First of all, leadership is all about personal example. If you don't walk the talk, uh, you're not going to be in a leadership position for very long. Secondly, one also must recognize that leadership is often a lonely place because after you have heard advice from those that can better illustrate the theme or the subject matter on which you are about to take decisions, when it comes to taking that decision, one is often confronted with the fact that what is doing, what is right is not necessarily popular. And at the end of the day, I think one has to understand when one is in leadership positions that one has to feel, as we would say in Spanish, tranquilo con su propia conciencia, tranquil with your own conscience, that you have researched as much as you could, brought together as much as information as was possible to do, and then have taken the best possible decision. What's the best piece of leadership advice that's been given to you? Probably given to me by my father, who during many years in Costa Rica was in public service. His advice was always treat people the way you would like to be treated yourself. And it's very important, especially in positions of leadership, that we respect individuals their positions, their philosophy, their culture, and their attitude with respect to the things we are discussing. If I asked your staff about your leadership style, what would they tell me? <laughs> they would probably say he is a hard worker, long hours, not so good on the 250 emails per day <laughs> that he receives, much better on the phone, uh, and always an optimist. And I think that's a very important consideration in our lives today. No matter how big the challenge or how unsurmountable uh, the, the responsibility we have to take on looks like, it's always important to be an optimist, to be a good team player, which is another characteristic that is very important in leadership. Is it difficult leading a virtual team? You know, that's something that has taken a lot of adjustment, not only on my part, 
but on the part of my colleagues on the senior leadership team and everybody else in the organization. The Carbon War Room is fast-paced, fast-moving, and we are attempting to grow this organization, a nonprofit all about profit in reducing carbon emissions in a profitable way into a global organization. Towards the future, I guess it's going to be much more an element of management and of leadership in organizations than it has been in the past. In spite of the fact that we are small, spread out over Washington, New York, London, and hopefully coming to Singapore as well, we have managed to cope with that. But I have to say it has taken some important amount of work and concentration on keeping everybody well informed, on keeping good communications both vertically and horizontally within the organizations, and in making sure that we are at all times identified with our main responsibilities at that point in time and well focused on what we are supposed to deliver. So we have found it very relevant to have a once a month unchangeable senior leadership team which is a face-to-face -face. and that allows us to go through the rest of the month in a virtual form. Jose Maria, thank you very much for your time today and thank you for joining us.